This show has a serious problem with pacing. Over half the runtime of this action adventure show about warriors and battle mages is low stakes, forgettable, trivial, slice of life filler. Oftentimes, the word filler is used purely as a disparaging term. It's commonly understood to mean parts of a story that exist outside the central narrative. Episodes, scenes, subplots, conversations, all of which could be at least theoretically removed from the story, and nothing significant about the plot would change. The author is padding out the story, killing time in between major story events. In the case of High Guardian Spice, we've already seen this in full effect. But it is also important to note that when utilized well, filler stories, as opposed to developments of the central narrative, serve a vital purpose in storytelling. Showing characters dealing with low-stakes situations, the calm everyday moments in between high-octane action gives the writers the opportunity to reveal to the audience just what kind of people the heroes are. When there's not much going on, the pure everyday nature of the characters rises to the forefront. Moreover, showing the humble happiness that comes from simple choice of life helps build stakes. It gives the heroes something tangible to fight for, the kind of peaceful existence they wish to protect, for themselves and for the people they love. Episode 11 of Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, Miracle at Rush Valley, is one of the few filler stories in the entire series, and it is easily one of the strongest episodes. In fact, if I was asked to recommend the series to someone with only one episode as my argument, I would choose this one. It's wholesome, funny, and the characterization of the cast is fantastic. And it achieves the best thing a filler episode can do, it works as a piece of art all on its own. Same goes for episode 35 of Avatar The Last Airbender, Tales of Ba Sing Se. Even though it's an inconsequential collection of slice of life vignettes, it is widely considered one of the best episodes of the series. Character stuff, episodic standalone stories, all of that is fine and dandy, often they are even my personal favorite parts in any TV show. I do love my characters, and episodes that are considered filler are usually the ones that truly get me invested in the characters. Filler in itself is not a bad thing. As with all things in writing, the execution is what counts. But given the fact that all the High Guardian characters snort spy straight out the back, and the show's rather tight dozen episode runtime, it's best not to waste too much time on inconsequential trouble of the day episodes. The creators have chosen to make an action adventure show, as broad as that genre is. This is not supposed to be a slice of nothing ever happens show. If that was the case, there would be 100% less weaponry present in every single episode. Your chosen genre carries certain expectations. Things like something actually happening. The first three episodes have already been wasted on establishing the characters as weak, bland, and one note as they are, there is no excuse for there to be any filler episodes going forth. If you have a story to tell, then just tell the story and stop wasting your audience's time. If you want to delve deeper to the characters, then do it adjacent to the main narrative moving forward. Weave the character moments amidst the action, the travel, the intrigue. This is not new or groundbreaking, Every story worth the man hours put into them follows this formula, since the dawn of storytelling. But if this show heeded common sense, then we wouldn't be here now, would we? That is one big pile of shit. Let's get shoveling. Episode 4 carries the name Past Present, and it actually marks an important turning point in the series. You see, this is the point where the show becomes self-aware and decides to present an apt review of itself right out of the gate. My sentiments exactly. Uh... Hello? What are you doing in my room? We're trying to pack for the weekend, but Sage's trunk is not cooperating. What? The... 
that does not answer the question, you Nimrod. The point still stands. Why are you in my room, presumably packing your stuff? Who the fuck wrote this? And have you ever had an actual conversation with a fellow human being? If it's not too forward of me to ask. These kinds of logical fumbles are so obvious a six-year-old could pick on them. Ah, oh, this goddamn dialogue will be the end of me. The wider premise of the episode is that the school will be evacuated for a while. For pest control. Now pay close attention, cause this is important. Good morning, everybody. Get out of here immediately. Dozens of traitors got loose from the dungeon and the school's crawling with them. Total evacuation until Monday. Okay. Thanks, Professor Redbud. Good. <laughs> the crazy potion hack teacher explains the situation as if the girls weren't already getting ready to leave for that exact reason. This is a classic example of a clunky dialogue trope, which I personally call, as you know, exchange. It's whenever a story has one of the characters state something that everyone within earshot knows fully well, for the benefit of expo dumping something to the audience. It's jarring, it's unnatural, and I want every writer out there to stop this and take some pride in their craft. Weave the info into the narrative in other ways. People are smarter than most writers think. They can figure things out from context. Do not just have your characters blurt out obvious facts. This is not how people speak. And if you are honestly this desperate for filler dialogue, you might as well just give up and start killing time by having the characters talk about weather or whatever. So due to the infestation of Parasex, the girls will be spending a couple of days back at their... Folks? Parents? I was actually tempted to say guardians. Get it? Guardians of guardians? Oh brother, this guy stinks! But before they can head out, our duo of Apex retards are having trouble getting their sentient flying treasure chest to cooperate. Putting aside the existential horror that is implied by the fact that such a thing exists. Girl. And apparently it is a she. I don't even wish to know how you came to that conclusion. Huh, we've tried everything. Pliers, a spatula, a shovel. Tridents, spells. The squirrely kid down the hall who picks locks. Intimidation tactics, hostage negotiation, charms, tickling. Have you tried asking nicely? Hmm. Please. Please, will you carry our things? And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.